For today's lesson, we will be discussing about circles and some of the concepts related to it. But first, let's try to recall the definition of a circle. Circle is a round plane figure whose boundary or the circumference consists of points equidistant from a fixed point, which is the center. There are also different parts of the circle. Let's start with the radius. Radius is a line segment from the center to any point of a circle. In this example, the radius R, segment AD, segment AF, segment AE, and segment AC. Notice that one endpoint of the radius is the center and then the other one is on the circle. You also have to take note that congruent circles are circles with the same radius. So, for circle A, we have segment AC and circle B, we have segment BD. If AC is congruent with segment BD, therefore circle A is also congruent to circle B. Next is we have chord. Chord is a line segment whose endpoints lie on the circle. So the chords are segment DF, segment EC, segment DC, and segment EF. Notice that the endpoints of the given chords are on the circle itself. We also have diameter. Diameter is a chord containing the center. On the previous one, we identify the different chords. Now, for a chord to become a diameter, it must contain the center. Therefore, the diameters are segment DC and segment EF. We also have arcs. Arc is a part of a circle, or it is a portion of the circumference of a circle. Congruent arcs are arcs with the same measure. So let's say arc BC and arc DF have the same measurement, therefore arc BC is congruent with arc DF, and vice versa. Semicircle is an arc of a circle having a measure of exactly 180 degrees. Take note that the whole circle measures 360 degrees, and when we say semicircle, that means we're just getting half of it. That's why a semicircle measures 180 degrees. The semicircles are arc DFC, arc DEC, arc EDF, and arc ECF. Notice that the endpoints of the arc are the endpoints of your diameter. And whenever we name a semicircle, we must use three letters so that we can already identify what part of the circle are you referring to. We also have major arc. Major arc is an arc of a circle having a measure greater than 180 degrees. So technically, these are the arcs greater than your semicircle. For example, we have arc DCE, arc DCF, arc cdf and arc efc again major arcs must be greater than your semicircle and you should also use three letters in naming them and we have minor arc it is an arc of a circle having a measure less than 180 degrees so therefore minor arcs must be smaller than your semicircles for example we have arc df we also have arc CF, arc CE, and arc ED. Notice that when naming minor arcs, we only use two letters. We also have angles formed on a circle. First is we have central angle. It is an angle whose vertex is the center of the circle. And on the given example, we have here two angles. Now, in finding a central angle, you have to take note that it is formed by two radiuses. In this example, we have two radiuses, which is segment IH and segment JH. Now, they met at the center, which is point H. Now, this point H serves as the vertex of angle IHJ, which is now our central angle. It is called a central angle since the vertex of it is the center of the circle. We also have inscribed angle. It is an angle whose vertex is on the circle itself. 
In finding an inscribed angle, you have to take note that it is formed by two chords. So, so in this example, there are two chords which are segment IK and segment JK. Now, they intersect or they have a common endpoint which is point K that serves as the vertex of the given angle. Since they met at point K which is on the circle itself, therefore, angle IKJ is considered as inscribed angle. There are some postulates and theorems related with central angles, inscribed angles, and its intercepted arcs. Let's start with postulate number 22 which is the central angle intercepted arc postulate. So it states that the measure of the central angle of a circle is equal to the measure of its intercepted arc. So in this example, as you can see, we have circle E with central angle, angle DEC. Now angle DEC is a central angle and its intercepted arc is this one which is arc DC. Now, given that the measurement of arc DC is equal to 92 degrees, we need to find the measurement of angle DEC. So by using the central angle intercepted arc postulate, so the measure of the central angle, which is angle DEC, is equal to the measurement of its intercepted arc, which is arc DC. Now, since we have the measurement of arc DC, which is 92, we can just substitute. Therefore, measurement of angle DEC is equal to 92 degrees. Again, this is because of the central angle intercepted arc postulate. Next is we have the inscribed angle theorem. This states that the measure of an inscribed angle is one half the measure of its intercepted arc. So this time, we're focusing on inscribed angle and its intercepted arc. So, in a given circle E, as you can see, we have here an inscribed angle, which is angle DAC. And its inscribed arc is this one, which is arc DC. Given that the measurement of arc DC is equal to 80 degrees, we need to find the measurement of angle DAC. By applying the inscribed angle theorem, we can say that the measurement of angle DAC is equal to half of the measure of its intercepted arc, which is arc DC. Now, since the measurement of arc DC is given, so we can just substitute and get the half of it. So that is one half of 80 degrees. So solving that, we can conclude that the measurement of angle DAC is equal to 40 degrees. So again, this is because of the inscribed angle theorem, wherein the measurement of an inscribed angle is half of the measure of its intercepted arc. And so that's it for today. I hope you learned something about central angle intercepted arc postulate and the inscribed angle theorem. See you next time.